In this video, we'll continue working on our guitar chords project that we started in the previous video. And here we're going to look at using the AV Foundation framework, which allow, will allow us to add an audio player. And we'll be able to play the different chord sounds that I've recorded. And then we'll use Guard to execute a statement that might or might not work. And if that statement does not work, if it would produce an error, we would be able to do something else. And usually that something else is we'd return or exit that function. And another way of doing some error checking is what we call do catch. We can put a block of code inside the do clause. And if that clause produces an error, we can execute what's in the catch. So we'll look at all those in building the audio capabilities for this project. Let's go to Xcode. So I have our guitar chords project open where we left it in the last video. We've added all the code to display the images of the chords. Now we need to add the audio capabilities. And to do that, we're going to use a framework. Now a framework is nothing more than a library of resources and objects and methods that we can import into our project and utilize those objects and methods and resources. We've been working with a framework already throughout almost all of our projects, and that framework was the UI kit. The user interface kit brings in the different elements we've been working with as far as our views. So our image view, our labels, our buttons are all made possible through that UI kit. We're going to add another framework here by importing it. And the framework we're going to use is the AV Foundation Framework. The AV Foundation Framework is a library of resources to record and play both audio and video. And in doing that, I can now go into the class level variables and I can create an object. I'm just going to call it Audio Player. And it is going to be of type AV. audio player and it is an optional type so I'm going to put a question mark after it and then I also want another class level variable to keep track of the current chord that has been selected so we're just going to make that a string variable and we'll set it to a null string Now I'm going to use that audio player to create a function to play an audio, to play an audio file. Before I do that, let's import our audio files. So I'm going to come over to our, our project navigator and I'm going to add in a new group. And this new group I'm going to name audio. So I'm going to go to the finder and find uh, some recordings of the chords that we're going to display in this project. And I'm going to select those chords or those files and bring them into my audio folder. It's going to ask me if I want to copy the, or to copy the items if needed. I certainly want to do that. I'm going to say finish. And there are the, the audio files now part of my project. And it's not a bad idea when you add files in to come look at the build phases and check your copy bundle resources and make sure those assets are there. So we can see that all those mp3 files have been added and that means they'll be bundled with the project. That's exactly what we want. If we take a look at the names here, notice that each of these files is named chord and then the chord we wanted to play, an A, an A minor, a B7, followed by 12. And I put a 12 in here because I recorded these off my 12 string. And then they are .mp3 files. All right, let's go back. I'm going to scroll that up. Let's go back to our storyboard. And we'll bring our view controller file over so we can see that, so we can write our code. I'm going to shrink some of this up a little bit. And we'll go down to my user-defined functions area. 
I'm going to write a function for my audio player that is of type AV audio player. And in doing this, I want to write it in such a way that I can send it a sound and I can use it then for other projects. So we're going to create a function. And that function is going to be play chord. Let's just make it play sound. That way it makes sense if I use it in other projects. I'm going to send it a string that I'm referencing as audio. Then we use the guard statement. The guard statement allows me to specify uh, another statement that may or may not work. In this case, I'm going to set a, UR, a, a variable called URL, which is going to be the reference to my file. So it's, it's part of the bundle. As we saw earlier, we went in and made sure it was going to be part of the bundle. So my path is going to be bundle.main.path. And I'm looking for a resource that is of what's going to be called audio. And it's of type MP3. In order to use this for other projects, I'd need to make sure that all my sounds are MP3 files, or I could bring that in, just like we brought audio in as a string, I could bring the extension of the sound file in as um, another parameter within this function. So that's what I want to have it do, but in case it doesn't work, maybe it can't find that file, then I want to do something else. And what I want to have it do is to show an alert. So I'm going to create another function called show alert. Let me scroll this up a little bit. And I'm going to pass the alert a, a title. And I'm just going to say file not found. That's going to be by far the most common error we're going to encounter in this situation. And the message parameter is going to be I couldn't find. I'm going to concatenate that with my audio file. So audio. And then I have it return. And by doing the return, it basically is going to end this function. It's not going to execute any of the code after the guard statement. And I also have a capital G on guard, that should be a lowercase g. And I want an apostrophe here in my string rather than a semicolon. Okay, so I'll come back and create that show alert function. And then we use another error checking feature called do catch. And the do catch, I can put something inside the do clause here. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, then I can execute what is in the catch. So for my do, I'm going to say audio player equals, and we're going to try. This is often referred to as a try catch. So we're going to try AV audio player. And it has a parameter of contents of which is going to be my, uh, it's going to be a URL. And that URL is going to come from file URL with, oops, let me capital W, with path. That's the name of the parameter. And what I'm passing to it is the URL lowercase that we created above. And then we'll say audio player. is an optional dot play and that will play the audio file if it can find it and once it loads it in it sets that up now we've got an error here because we're still looking for that show alert and we have a problem here and use of unresolved identifier AV audio player because I capitalized the U so I'm going to fix that well that will then go away and now if that doesn't work I want to have a catch and so I'm going to use that show alert again and the title here is just going to be error. 
and my message will be error, which is actually a local variable. In fact, I'm going to put that in here. So catch, I'm going to say catch let error. And so message is going to be error dot localized description. So it will show what the error was, kind of a catch all for errors. And again, it's looking to find that show alert. So I need to create that. I'm a little concerned with my problem in the second, or the second error is finding here in the audio player equals. And I see that it capitalized the I, so I'm going to fix that. Hopefully that will go away now. And let's create our function of show alert. So we have a title parameter that we specified earlier. That's going to be a type string and a message, which is of type string. We're going to create a alert controller variable or object, which is going to equal a UI alert controller. We've worked with alert controllers in a previous project. I'm going to set the title to title and the message to message. And then my preferred style will be a dot alert. And I've got an extra parenthesis here that shouldn't be there. And I don't want an S on alert controllers. That should be singular. All right, I think I found all my bugs in that statement. Let's then add an action. Let's call this action one. And it's gonna equal UI alert action. And again, I see I've got two I's here and an L that's uppercase. Of course, everything has to be exact in terms of casing. The title is going to be OK. And the style will be dot default. And what I want to have that do is we're going to add an action UI alert action in. And I'm actually not going to have it do anything. It's just going to, we're going to click the button. It's going to close. So I'm going to just put a comment here of do nothing. I'm going to take our alert controller. We're going to add the action to our alert controller object of action one. And then we're going to present this. So self dot Present and present the alert controller animated will be true and completion will be nil. Okay, that concludes my show alert function. Again, this is something you might want to use in multiple projects if you just want to show an OK button. Um, have it not do anything, you can copy and paste this code in and reuse it in other projects. So all my other errors went away. And I think we're, oh, we got to do a couple more things here. We need to come up to our show chord button. We want to show, or we want to, we want to play the chord sound 
with, as we display the chord image. So I created that variable called my chord earlier. It's a class level variable. We're going to set it equal to a literal string of chord with a capital C. That's how I had named those sounds. Plus sender dot current title. I'm going to unwrap that. Plus 12. And that was for the 12 string. And then I can call the play sound function that we created. So it'll be play sound and I want to send it the audio file named my chord. We also have this play button down here that's going to play whatever the current chord is that we've selected. And I need to create an action for that button. So I'm going to control drag it. We want to make this an action. And I'm just going to call this play chord button. It's going to be of type UI button. We'll make that connection. And really all we need to do here is play our sound and pass it the audio file of whatever my chord is. And since it's a class level variable, my chord will have a value as we, as we select the various chords. Okay, that should be our project. Let's just run this and see if it works. So there's our A, A minor, G. If I click the play button, it's gonna play the last chord again. So G again, G again, C, and C again. And so our project seems to work uh, as we intended. Need probably going to go through and test all the buttons and make sure it's playing the different chords. So that is how we can add audio to our projects. You can see it's pretty straightforward.